so this is a book I was kind of really excited for since like I would say perhaps like last mm, July maybe maybe June I can't quite remember the month but basically with this book uh, I heard about this book or I learned about this book when I learned about Poster Girl uh, and I learned about Poster Girl because um, Goodreads sent me a notification through email and then I, I pre-ordered the book it came out and while I was uh, while I was um, while I was like uh, promoting the book, I, I saw this one came up and I'm like, oh, what's this about? And I read it and, I, and I'm like, it is a, uh, a, 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 a uh, reimagining of Antigone. Okay, why not? It sounds fun. I, I remember really liking Antigone in high school. So I was actually kind of excited to read it. I and uh, I revisited the premise. I I looked up the the plot on Wikipedia. Um, maybe I'll read the old play. I'm not sure, but I remember really enjoying the, uh, uh, the 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 the. I remember really enjoying it in high school when I read it, and I I revisited the premise, and I was like, oh, it's a really good premise. I so I really like the premise, and I really find it really interesting there are so many stories you can uh you can come up with there are so many there there's so many stories that you can kind of you know you can uh you can you can tell in that kind of setting and and how you choose to tell them so i really like the premise and i like the idea of it being reimagined and i have thoughts so let's talk about it but first the synopsis from dystopian visionary and best-selling phenomenon, Veronica Roth comes a razor-sharp reimagining of Antigone. An arch-conspirator, Roth reaches back to the roots of legend and delivers a world of a world of tomorrow, both timeless and unexpected. Outside the last city on Earth, the planet is a wasteland. Without the archive where the genes of the dead are stored, humanity will end. Passing into the archive should be cause for celebration, but Antigone's parents were murdered, leaving her father's throne vacant. As her militant uncle, Creon, rises to claim it, all Antigone feels is rage. When he welcomes her and her siblings into his mansion, Antigone sees it for what it really is, a gilded cage where she is a captive as well as a guest. But her uncle will soon learn that no cage is unbreakable and neither is he. Okay, so if you've read Veronica Roth before, uh, she mainly, uh, or they mainly write uh, science fiction. So um, that's like mainly what you're going to find if you re read Veronica Roth. It's science fiction, dystopia is like the biggest thing, uh, but you, you um, and if, if, with the exception of maybe Carve the Mark, I would say, you also, oh, and The Chosen Ones, you also get science fiction with fantasy elements. So, you, you but mainly sci-fi, right? So, I, I, you know, this was not, this was not surprising for me because I've read Veronica Roth before and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sci-fi sounds right for this kind of reimagining. I like the way it went. Like, I like the way that she, that the, the world was built for this. It kind of works. I mean... First of all, the prose is good because it is, but again, the world building still works. Uh, it's really interesting the way the world building is. Uh, it, it, for a short novella, I think there was a, there were a lot of aspects of the world that were covered and I thought were just really interesting. So I, um, so I, I kind of, I, I like it, you know, I really like it. 
I I think that the the world is really crisp and it feels lived on and it feels great. Um, another thing I guess I, I really enjoy a lot is the way the story is told, although there is a con to this and I will talk about it. So the story is told in several point of views. It is told in first person, present, but there are a lot of different point of views. We have Antigone's, we have Ismini's, um, we have one of the brothers whose name I have totally forgotten. I am sorry. Uh, we have uh, Eurydice's point of view. And there's even one chapter where we get Creon's point of view. And honestly, I like it. Like, I like the idea of this kind of setup because I like the, the fact that I like the, the stories that have multi POVs and I like that you ran, you get random point of views here and there. So I like it. I talked about uh, first person, like the biggest pitfall, pitfall, what did I say pitfall? Pitfall of first person writing is the fact that you are stuck in one character's head and you see everything through their heads. It is very, it's very, um, it's very limited because you you don't get to you can do it it can be done but you you don't get to learn about other characters the same way that you would if you do say a third person omniscient or something in that form or if you just do different point of views but if you're like writing say in one point of view you it is it's a very limited story and it's in you're writing the story through a limited scope um and uh while it while multi pov stories can kind of combat that in my opinion in a way because you have several point of views that you can use uh or one to two povs or how many however many povs you want to use even if you're going to write um first person while uh i think multi povs is a good way to combat some of that stuff it can also lead to the problem that this story has especially for the length of this story. Now, this is a novella. According to Goodreads, it is 112 pages. So it is a very short scope to, to write your story by. Now, I enjoy novellas, just for the record, I do. I love them. Some of my favorites uh, in, in general, like my favorite novellas that I've read in recent memory are uh, The Murderbot Diaries, uh breach of peace by daniel green is a really really good one because i really enjoyed it um so uh that's something that i i have uh that i that i i, I really uh computer stop hold on a sec you guys because she's gonna remind me again she's reminding me to have computer stop Reading and, and and breakfast. Those are the reminders for 9 a.m. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, and I lost my train of thought. Uh, wait. Oh, uh, great. Now I can't remember where I was because I just lost my train of thought after having to stop my echo. Oh, right. Novellas. So yeah, some of my favorite stories are novellas. I really enjoyed uh, like Breach of Peace and Murderbot Diaries, right? I love novellas. I think I write them. I write mainly short stories, but uh, uh, the book I am currently uh, editing is going to hit novella territory, I feel, because it is over the 15,000 word mark. Uh, so it could potentially reach uh, novella territory. So I really love novellas. They they have, they are so, so amazing. Like after, I like novels too, but I feel like novellas are being, are, are being, are like just better in some ways because you can tell a very tight story. You can tell a very uh, character driven and tight story with a novella. There are not so many plot lines, usually, and there are not so many, uh, and there are not so many things to to focus on, at least for me as a painter. So uh, I love novellas. I like writing them and I do like reading them. So 
for this novella in such a short scope, there are a lot of characters that we are seeing and we are getting their point of views. And the problem is they don't get equal page time. So some of the point of views feel unnecessary. A lot of them actually do. Most of the point of views feel unnecessary. Um, so because they do, it, it's like you're, you, it, I, I like the idea that's going for it, but a lot of the point of views in this story besides Antigone's feel unnecessary. So they feel unnecessary because there's so many and because of the scope. Uh, personally, when I write uh, novellas and stuff like that, and I do write in like a third person omniscient kind of thing, where I can move from point from character POV whenever I like. It is called head hopping, by the way. I like head hopping, so I do it. Um, but I uh, I like to write that way. But usually, I like to limit the scope of characters that I'm choosing to to uh, to interact with. So, for example, I'm currently writing a story where. There are going to be a lot of characters or there are supposed to be a lot of characters, but I'm not going to focus on all those characters. Uh, and I might find a way in the story and I might look into maybe even lowering the amount of characters that there is, that there are, I'm sorry, the amount of characters that there are. So the way I, I, might, I might do that is I might limit the number uh, even though there are supposed to be a lot, at least in the beginning. So I won't focus on every single character, however, because I don't want to. I'm only going to focus on the main ones that are kind of a, an interesting an interesting bunch. So that will be like the, the, the plan because those will be the, those are going to be the main three. And then the others are, might just be summarized by one of the characters, right? So I'm going to do that. But in this case, um, Roth did choose to focus on a lot of different characters, but they don't get e they don't get an equal amount of page time. And it also doesn't help that they feel unnecessary. Besides Antigone's point of view, everything else feels kind of unnecessary. There are also some, like, there are also some other plot lines brought up that aren't resolved necessarily. And I don't really mind the fact that they're not resolved. It, it kind of left the... We kind of ended the book in a way that feels kind of like an open-ended ending. So it feels like, well, this is what happened and we don't know what could happen, but this could happen. So it left it in a way that you could kind of theorize. I don't mind that they're not necessarily uh, resolved, but uh, this could bother other readers. And I find that because it's a short length though, it was just easier to focus on one plot so the addition of other, like one more plot line, because there is one more plot line um, that is kind of talked about, uh, but it's not a big part of the story. Like we just know it as part of like something that's happening outside of the main plot. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if, the, if that needed to be there, kind of like the point of views where most of them feel unnecessary this plot line that was added with the rebels also kind of just feels unnecessary it just doesn't i i just don't find myself uh i just don't find myself uh it just doesn't feel uh like it's going to be it's a necessary um plot line but it is here so what can I do um, about that? <laughs> I read it. But yeah, that is like the issue. I think that a lot of these POVs are unnecessary. And because of that, it just feels kind of, uh, kind of, uh, kind. it just feels like it's too many, you know? So, uh, so that's, that's like the main con for this. The pacing is pretty good. I mean, Again, for the novella, it's fine. It's not. It's not the the most. Uh, it's 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 okay. I will say that the story also uh, sticks to, it to the. It does stick very faithfully to the story. So I'm not sure. I guess this is a reimagining because it's in a sci-fi setting, but it does. It is very very loyal 
to the original source material so it almost feels like an adaptation but placed in sci-fi i'm not sure i feel like it definitely needed more i think the characters are fine again because we get so many point of views all of them don't feel they don't feel all that developed uh a lot of they don't re none of them really go through an arc which yeah none of them really go through an arc it just feels kind of their their characters are not necessarily flat but their arcs are and i'm not sure it, it felt like they were supposed to go through an arc but they didn't so it feels just odd i think um there's also some kind of romantic plot line that just doesn't fit um so that that was that for me overall those are my thoughts on arch conspirator i i think it needed more it needed i think novella is just not it's not the it's it, it's not the formula that works for this one i think it needed more we needed there were, I remember, uh, one of the things I remember is that there were uh, hints to some backstory, especially regarding Creon, as to why he took over their uh, their city that they're in. And also just in general, more backstory. There, there were some hinting to backstory that just weren't explored. So I feel like it needed a couple more pages, at least 50 more pages to kind of get kind of drench us in the story if that makes any sense so it did it definitely needed more more time more time to kind of get the reader in especially through uh for the backstory like the backstory is just kind of like hinted at but not but not touched or explored so i i think it definitely needed more uh it needed more time it needed more work uh and like i feel like uh roth needed to go back and uh, tighten up some things and edit others in because it just feels like a, a really it kind of reads like a, a, a not I wouldn't say like a first draft I don't think it read well no it reads like a second to third draft that still hasn't gotten all the context it needs um and as someone who really loves Roth's writing this is very hard to say I'm a huge fan of Roth's stories and I think this one was okay but I really needed that and needed more for it to to work uh for it to work I feel like it it doesn't read it doesn't necessarily read like a it, it like a uh, first draft it just reads like a second to third draft that just needed more polishing before uh before publication I mean I take my stories through more than six edits so maybe this is why I think it reads kind of like that like to me it doesn't necessarily read like a clean first draft but it does read like something that needed more editing in my opinion so those are my things I gave it I read it at three stars no it's not it's not bad it's not great it's just there so if you have read Arch Conspirator, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, I'm very curious to, to know what you have, uh, what you've, uh, what you, what you think. If you're going to go into spoilers, please let everyone know. Uh, so, yeah. Hello, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, if you are new to the channel, welcome. If not, welcome back. And I hope that you stick around to uh, listen to other episodes of this podcast. So it has been a little bit since I posted a long review, but I hope to actually post more of them more often. My next review will be actually in two weeks and it's going to be a longer video. It will be for a romance that I read called Bad Boy Bossy Pants and I cannot remember the author's name for the life of me but that will be the next episode. If you're new and are unaware who I am, hello, I am your host Anexus Matos. I am a blind uh, author content creator and freelancer and you know do this for a hobby because i want to talk about all everything i'm reading so yeah uh <laughs> anyway if you enjoy the content that you saw 
consider subscribing to my channel and turning on notifications so you're aware of when I post new uh, videos. Next week will be a predictions video um, and I will be discussing Attached at the Hip by um, Christine Riccio. It has already been released but I do want to talk about it so I'm going to talk about the my predictions for the book uh, which I did record before uh, before it was released but I will, I will record that then. Um, also, if you would like to support me in any way besides subscribing, you can check out my writing uh, on my website linked in the description. You can find my blog, which you will find uh, creative nonfiction, uh, the first draft of a book that I'm currently working on, and you will find a bunch of other links, um, including my shop and my Kofi, which basically on the same page. If you would like to support me in that way, you can definitely visit my Kofi. You can check out my uh, books. I have, um, I am, I, I have, I have a uh, fantasy debut uh, out called Daughter of Death. It is the first in the Child of Death series, and you should definitely consider getting it now because the the second book in the series, The Beginning of Us, is coming soon and if you are more um into poetry i also have a poetry collection out called pieces of me which you can find in all major retailers and unlike um my daughter of death book this one is actually on amazon i was able to get it there this time um unfortunately daughter of death is not there but you can find the ebook in uh um on Amazon and other major retailers, as well as my bookshop. Definitely check those out. Um, and you can also find commissions on my Kofi, which you can hire me to do. These include poetry uh, writing. Uh, these are like, uh, these are the two I have right now are poetry writing and beta reading. Definitely take a look at those. If you have any questions on those, Feel free to message me before commissioning or feel free to message me on Instagram and I will be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Um, I'll see you very, very soon. I'll see you in my next video. And remember, my next review will be a longer one and will be in two weeks. And I hope you enjoy the conversation I have um, within that review. But for now, I'll see you later. Um, Thank you for watching, happy reading, and uh, consume stories. Bye!